Hey everyone, I am Lauren Serpin of the Riverdale Hemp Factory and Hemp Traders, and I am here to do a presentation on the modern vision of the hemp fiber industry. Now, uh, fiber is the most valuable part of the hemp plant, and when I say that, I am comparing it to both flower and grain and possibly even root. But I'm here to say that fiber will be the most valuable part of the hemp plant. The reason I say that is it is the fiber that we're going to add all of these wonderful products like taxidiles, plastics, building materials, paper. Hemp can do all of these things. Uh, but of course, we need to know how do we get this industry started. All right, now I'd like to introduce to you the Riverdale Hemp Factory. Riverdale Hemp Factory is made up of three people. Uh, myself, Lawrence Serpin, uh, with Hemp Traders, and I have had 31 years in the hemp industry. I got started in 1990. Uh, it's also made up of Tom Pyers, who has 45 years in the cotton industry, growing cotton in the Central Valley of California. And it's made up of Patrick Flaherty, who has 15 years of composite research, is with PF Designs, and has worked with uh, other hemp uh, coordinating facilities in the past. Now, together, we are uh, the Riverdale Hemp Factory, and the mission statement of our new company is to modernize hemp, empower the farmer, and to create solutions. Now, to modernize hemp means we need to do a few different things. One, it means farmers are working directly with the processing facility. And what I mean by that is we cannot have a uh, disconnect there. The processing of the facilities and the farmers have to know what's going on so uh, the farmers can grow the fiber or grow the hemp the right way and the processing facilities will get what they need to get the highest value. Uh, also, modernizing hemp involves using certified or proven fiber varieties, meaning fiber varieties that are specific for your grow, what you want to do with it, and no more kind of guessing as to what you want to do. Uh, developing green fortification, where if we can separate the fibers uh, when they're green at the time of harvest, uh, we're going to save a lot of money. We don't have to necessarily build an expensive uh, decornication facility. Also means utilizing the economy of scale. Uh, so far, hemp really is just a niche market. We need to utilize the economy of scale. Uh, by doing that, we'll be able to get the commodity prices or the prices of processing the hemp fiber much lower, which will make it more acceptable in more industries and increase the demand. Uh, we'll also modernize it by standardizing of raw materials and processed fibers. What that means is we're going to standardize uh, the raw material, what it's going to look like when the farmer's going to sell it, meaning maybe the length, uh, the dryness, uh, how it's processed, things like that, similar to what's done with cotton today. Uh, we're also going to standardize the process of fibers, where if we have to shorten them to different lengths or get them <clears throat> certain thicknesses, we're going to get all of that standardized. Modernizing hemp also means separating the hemp fibers from themselves. It basically means not only can you decorticate, but then the fibers have to separate from one another. So you have thinner fibers and you're able to get thinner yarns or have finer applications of the fiber. And of course, uh, the specifications of the fibers for custom use. And that means being able to modify these hemp fibers to get different lengths or different thicknesses so uh, it will work for the customer's applications. Second part of our mission statement is empowering the farmer. And when I say that, basically I mean the farmer needs to earn a profit. And I'll say it again, the farmer has to earn a profit. It is extremely important. If we want this industry to succeed, we need people growing it. And if the farmers aren't earning a profit, they are not going to grow the hemp. So on a basic level, or the most basic level, they need to earn a living, 
so you need to have the fiber so we can get it out there in the market. All right, so how does a farmer earn more money for growing it? Well, that as River Hill Hemp Factory, that's what we've been figuring out this year. Uh, basically, a farmer will earn more money on greater yields, higher quality, and selling the fiber into more lucrative markets. To grow hemp, I uh, gotta remember that you gotta grow it as a, for a primary crop. What I mean by that is you need to grow it for either fiber, for flour, or for grain. When you grow for basset fiber, uh, your herd is going to then end up in the secondary crop. When you grow for flour, then the hemp draws in your secondary crop. And if you grow for grain, uh, also the hemp draws in your secondary crop there. So, when you grow hemp or fiber, you'll get approximately six to eight times the quantity of fiber per acre compared to growing with flour or seed. And if you let the plants go to flower or seed, the quality of the fiber is going to decrease. So, if you want the high yield of good quality fiber, you're going to have to grow the hemp for fiber. Now, uh, how do you get a greater yield? Well, with hemp, it would mean a longer growing season. In California's Central Valley, we were able to plant uh, in early March and then harvest in August, which gave us a good five-month growing period. Uh, the proper variety, you gotta make sure you got good fiber varieties that are also at the proper latitude. If you're in the wrong latitude, they're not gonna grow right. The density of planting, how many plants are you going to get per square yard, or I should say, how many pounds per acre are you gonna plant the seeds? And then of course, will that translate into how many plants per square yard you're gonna get? The higher the density, you're gonna get higher yields. Uh, water, you gotta make sure that there is water and you do water the plants uh, as they need it. Fortunately, we do now, now know that hemp does indeed use less water than cotton, probably about 30% less. So, uh, but you do need to water them when they're not gonna grow. And then, of course, nutrients, uh, either fertilizer or the proper soil for the hemp to grow. If that's all balanced right, you're going to end up with a greater yield. All right, and then there's the quality of the fibers. And, of course, as I mentioned earlier, is the hemp being grown specifically for fiber because that will get you the best quality fiber. The density of the planting will also increase the quality of the fiber too, not only the yield, but also the quality, because you're gonna get a thinner stock, which will yield finer fibers. Uh, the time of the harvest, you know, if you harvest it in August, uh, right before they go to flower, you're gonna get the best quality of fiber. But if you do wait until after it flowers or it goes to seed, the quality of the fiber is gonna diminish uh, quite a bit. Uh, the quality of the decortication. When the, it is decorticated, are you able to get a clean separation? Are you getting more than 99% separation of the fibers? If there are mixed, you know, if you get 99% or less uh, decortication, that's going to really lower the value of that fiber. And then the cleanliness of the decortication. You want it to be clean. You don't want dust or dirt or other particles in your fiber. Now, what would be a more lucrative market? Well, the highest uh, market for uh, fibers would be for yarns and textiles. You can get quite a bit more if you sell into that market with the hemp fiber. Other possible high-end markets would be high-end composites and, and uh, high-end engineered building products. Now, of course, we need to know what is the value of the fiber for the farmer? That's the big question. So when we look at it, we have to know that there is hemp grown for fiber, and then there is hemp grown for grain or flour. Uh, both will produce fiber, but you're going to get a difference in the yield and quality. So if we grow hemp for fiber, uh, the straw that you're going to get, that would be if you grew it, chopped it down, and then didn't do anything with it. So it's like the whole hemp straw lying on the ground dried out would be referred to as hemp straw. Uh, grown for fiber, you're going to get about 7,852 pounds per acre, and the value of that is going to be anywhere from about 8 cents a pound 
to about 11 cents a pound. Your yield then for the farmer, I should say, gross income per acre is going to be about $651 per acre to $911 per acre. But if the, fiber is, uh, if the farmer is able to do the decortication on the field, doing green decortication, then he's going to have two crops that he's able to sell. The basset fiber, which will get about 1,600 pounds per acre, will go for about 27 cents a pound to 72 cents per pound, yielding $436 to $1,164 per acre. On top of that, the farmer will also be able to sell the herd. There is an at about 6,246 uh, 6, pounds per acre, selling anywhere from about 10 cents a pound to 30 cents a pound. That would yield 649 to $1,873 per acre. So if you were to combine uh, the bass fiber and herd fiber, uh, you're, you could potentially be grossing over $3,000 per acre if you have a good yield and good quality fiber. Now, if we compare that for hemp grown for flour or grain, the yields are going to be a lot less. Now, you ought to remember that the farmer made his money on the flour or on the grain. That's not included here. He sold that, he's made his money. This little extra fiber is just going to be a little bit of a bonus that you can get. So, uh, if you grow uh, for grain or flour, uh, the amount of straw you're going to get is quite a bit lower, about uh, 840 to about 1,680 pounds per acre. That's going to sell for anywhere from about 2 cents to about 8, cent, eight cents a pound. That will yield really not a lot, any from, anything from about $16.80 an acre to $134.40 an acre. Not great, but if it's on top of what you've already earned, then hey, it's not bad. It's not such a money for the farmer. Uh, if that farmer is able to separate those fibers and, and sell them separate uh, separately, he would get about 172, 172 to 343 pounds per acre of basset fiber, selling for about six, uh, seven cents to about maybe 18 cents a pound. That wouldn't yield a lot, about $12 to about $62 per acre. And then the herd fiber, anywhere from about 668 pounds to 1,336 pounds. That would sell, once again, anywhere from about 10 cents to 30 cents. So you could get anywhere from about $69 an acre or more to 400 Not great, but if it's in addition to what they've already sold, then it's not bad for the farmer to get that. Now, the last part of our mission statement is creating solutions. And that means cultivating the hemp fiber ourselves before asking anyone to grow it for us. Uh, this year, the Riverdale Hemp Factory did grow about three and a half acres of hemp up in the Central Valley. And with this, we have found out so many things uh, on growing, you know, densities, what's needed, what to do, what not to do that we are really doing that so we can make sure that in 2022 we're going to prevent a lot of problems and make sure that the farmers aren't going to be able to make a profit. Uh, setting the value of the fiber to guarantee profitability for everyone. We're fortunate that uh, the hemp fiber is not yet a commodity so we can set the prices and anyone who works with us Absolutely, you're going to make a profit on it if you follow our instructions and use our seeds. We're going to guarantee you will make a profit on that, uh, what you're going to grow that year. You're not going to be subject to market forces. Uh, sourcing the right strains. Uh, basically, we are the ones who know where to get the different strains of hemp to grow for fiber and to get the best quality fiber with the highest yields. Uh, we're also lowering overall costs through innovation and technology with uh, the expertise in composites, expertise in decortication. We are able to lower our costs and then, of course, lower the uh, raw material costs, which will allow it to be better used in all the different industries. And then, of course, uh, we have years of experience selling hemp fiber which means we know the market and we actually already have a customer base. Some traders uh, has been in business for uh, about 26 years and we're already selling the fiber 
we already have a market for it. So if the farmer can grow it, we're able to move it. So in conclusion, the Riverdale Hub Factory, we have the skills, we have the experience, and we have the expertise to make the hemp industry happen. And of course, this is good for the farmer, good for the environment, and good for the planet. Thank you.